person, we welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. We say that this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we bring the service before you, Father. We just thank you that your Holy Spirit does a mighty work in every precious person's hearts this morning, Father. That the sick will be healed, the lame will walk, the blind will see, that the, the lame will walk in Jesus' mighty name, Father God. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father God, for the precious blood of Jesus that he shed for every single one of us that we could go free of sickness, bondage, disease in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I just want to read Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever. Great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will com uh, commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of your glorious splendor uh, of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim of your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He is compassionate on all he has made. All you have made will praise your Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of your glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and your glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open up your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears a cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love, love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Father, this morning we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we give you of our very best praise, worship and honor. Father, you deserve all glory and honor. Father yes, God, Lord. you're a good God, you're a mighty God, yes, you're an Lord. awesome God. Father, we come with expectant hearts, Father, yes. that you will heal the brokenhearted, that you will heal every precious person crying out to you this morning, Father God. Father, you know every single one of their needs, Father. Yes, and we just Jesus. thank you, Lord, you're a good God and you will answer all their prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So family, friends, relatives, listeners, give God glory this morning for He is a good God. And He saves, He delivers, and He sets free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Father, we bring Pastor Bob before you. We thank you, Lord. He'll preach the oracles of God this morning, that He will be led by your Holy Spirit, Father God. We just thank you, Lord, for the gift of the healing. A gift of uh, discerning the spirits in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we just thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. Father, we are expectant. We are expectant this morning to hear from you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
taste of them will come near our dwelling, our families. In Jesus' name, because Jesus' name is greater than any other name. Greater than the name of Corona. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Under the shadow of your In fact, there was a saying, I think I may have shared it with you before, that life is very fragile, handle it with prayer. Handle it with prayer. The world can't offer you what God offers you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, it says that the devil is the God of this world. And the systems in this world, the pleasures of this world, they all belong to the devil, not to God. How did the devil get control of this world? Well, Adam gave it to him. In Jesus' name. What I want to speak to you about, Liam and myself, we heard a message on this the other week, and we decided that, and I've been praying, I don't just do things because something sounds nice. I first pray and ask God if he wants, if it's something that he thinks you need to hear, there's people that need to hear this that aren't here today. But you watching by the video, take this in. It's for you as well. In Jesus' name, it's a message for all of us. And the message is entitled, Are You Living by Faith? And don't groan and moan because it's about faith again. And I'll tell you why. Because Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we need to be living lives, not to please our flesh, not to please those around us in their worldly ways, but we should be living a life to please God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And he's a loving heavenly father and he wants us to enjoy our lives and he wants us to do it his way Amen. and not the way we think is yeah. right. Because we will find out one day like Eric, yesterday, today he's in glory with Jesus. He's in the presence of the Lord. He's marveling at all the things that he can see. And he's probably got a lot of questions he wants to ask the Lord. And uh, he probably asked them already, yeah. you're quite right. Yeah. And I think that's the first thing most of us would do. But the, the, the fact of the matter is this, that Eric has found out that... You don't know the time, the place, or the date when God is going to call you home. And we need to be ready for it. That one scripture, I haven't got it in my notes today, but that one scripture that I've read to you many, many times before, when they came to Jesus and said, Lord, Lord, we lay hands on the sick, we spoke in other tongues, we did this and we did that, and the Lord will say, away from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. You see, it's not enough for us to know the Lord. The Lord must know us. Yes. When we pray in the mornings, Lee and I together, we pray for those in our families that are unsaved, that are not born again. And if you watch this video, I love you, but you're going into an eternal damnation if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you might think I'm talking rubbish and poppycock, but one day you're going to find out what is the truth. And this is heavy on my heart this morning because of the news about Eric. I suppose it stirred something up inside of me. I don't know. But first, we must understand this. We need to, our faith must be directed at God. Our faith must be in God. Our faith must be in His Son, Jesus Christ. And our faith must be in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our faith must be in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. I was marveling at a program we like to watch on the television about um, uh, the, uh, smugglers and how they catch them at the airports and uh, also uh, where the crates from, from uh, cargo that comes from overseas 
where it lands in America and where they, at random, go through those crates and uh, they have sniffer dogs and they have all sorts of equipment and they're looking for stuff that's being illegally imported into the country. Mainly drugs, but other things. For instance, this is what went through my mind. There was artifacts that came from Egypt and Syria and places around there of, of pharaohs and, and all their artifacts and things that have been found in uh, uh, um, what they call it, archaeology, archaeological sites where they're digging up looking for these relics and all the rest of it. And some people, they go there and they steal these things and they, for instance, they had the one, it was all smashed up, so I don't know if they're going to get much out of it, but they had a small pharaoh that they found on one site, and it was in half, and they put the face back together, the, the customs guys, and what they do is, they then send it off to the experts, and the experts, they look at it, and they look and they see whether it's a fake, or whether it's genuine, and if it's genuine, it's taken to one side, and, and, and there's a big investigation that they, they go into to try and catch those smugglers that are smuggling it into the country. And the thing that I thought of when I saw this was how amazing that they can find artifacts from thousands of years mm -hmm. ago that were in the tombs and, and in Egypt and, yeah. and in the pyramids and, and all these other sites where they've been digging up. I mean, they, they dug up in Israel recently some more scriptures <laughs> that were in line with the Dead Sea Scrolls that they found in the 60s. And, uh, and it's just marvelous when they find these things. They've never found the bones or the body <coughs> of Jesus. That's right. Amen. He was buried. History proves it. History proves the tomb that he was buried in. If you go to Israel today, they'll show you that tomb that he was buried in. And if you go into that tomb, it's empty. Yes, amen. <laughs> There's nothing there. So we have to have faith in his death, his burial, and his resurrection of Jesus and the word of God. Do you know how many other religions, other than Christianity, uh, that, that regard Jesus as a holy man, as a prophet. Why is it that they regard him as that when we see the one that they worship is false gods? The reason they see Jesus as that is because of this death, burial and resurrection that they can't work out, but they know it's true and it exists. And we need to have faith in that. You see, you either have faith in God or you have faith in the world. Mm, that's right. You have faith in God, or you have faith in this world. I was talking to a guy, pay, praying for him uh, over the last few days, and he was going for tests because there's, they felt that he had cancer in his body. And he said to me, he said, if it's my time to go, I didn't see in God's hands. And then when he said that, then he would say another thing, but keep praying for me. And I could see fear on his face. I could hear fear in his voice. And we will do everything in our power to try and fight death. But there's a problem here. There's one thing facing death with God. There's another thing facing death without God. And if you're alive in this world, you've either got faith in God or you've got faith in this world. And it breaks my heart the number of people, including family members and people that we've met when we've done street work in the past, and you share the gospel with them and you tell them these things and they think we're crazy. They think we're off our heads, but the time is coming when we will close our eyes, our heart will beat its last beat, and we will find out whether this is rubbish or whether this is true. And I can tell you, I've got a lot of questions about my walk, Christian walk, but one thing that I do know is this, that Jesus is alive. Amen. He's the Son of God. Amen. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you either submitted to God or you submitted to the world. 
And if you submit it to the world, you submit it, whether you realize it or not, to the devil. Because as I told you, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 says, the devil is the god of this world. Then you submit it to the wicked ways of the world. And the wicked ways of the world, according to the Apostle John, is uh, sorry, Apostle Paul, is enmity towards God. In other words, it's an enemy of God. You become an enemy of God if you are in submission to this world and the wicked ways of the world. And if you're, you don't want to be an enemy of God, because if there's somebody you need on your side, it's God. That's right. It's God. And so we need to hear as much about faith as we can, because it's one of those things that pleases God so much. And I want to start this off, I don't know how long this is going to go on for, not today, but the, if it becomes a series, I always leave these things to the Spirit of God. But I want to tell you this morning, faith is a gift. It's a gift yeah. from God. Hallelujah. It's a gift from God. There are different gifts that come from God. There's spiritual gifts like speaking in tongues, prophesying, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the, the gifts of healings, and all these different things. So those are gifts from God. Then there's the gifts of the ministry from God, spoken of in Corinthians and Romans. And it speaks about administrations and, 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 uh, um, uh, and ministries of helps and things like that. They are all gifts from God. Your life is a gift from God. Your life is a gift from God. You, you might have messed your life up and it might not be too pleasing to you. Or you might not be very happy in your life. But your life is a gift from God. And if you're suffering and struggling and you've been contemplating ending your life because it's so messed up. Let me tell you something. This morning you need to strip yourself of your desires. Strip yourself of your wrong focus on your life and get yourself focused on God and the life that he has for you. It just means you made the wrong choices. You chose the wrong way in Jesus' name and you need to repent. And to repent isn't just to be sorry, but to repent is to have a change of mind, to turn around and walk in another direction in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4. If I can read it, it's so dark here. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. It says, therefore, indeed, the gospel, that's the word of God, the good news about Jesus, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. You see, this word, you, people that come to the church come every week and hear the word. And uh, many of you out there watching this video, you watch this every week when you get it. I know because if I miss sending it out, you send me messages. Where's the video? So I know there are people out there watching it. And you get the word every week. But the Bible says getting the word isn't enough. It's not going to profit you unless it's mixed with faith. You have to act on what you believe. Faith is acting on what you believe. So you hear the word of God. And as uh, Smith Wigglesworth, I think it was, or Kenneth Hagin, one of them used to say, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. And there should be no other way. If God said it, that should settle the matter, and you should be believing it in Jesus' name. You can think it's foolishness, and you can think you know better, then you're full of pride, and you need to strip yourself of that pride, because pride comes before a fall. In Jesus' name. A haughty spirit comes before fallen pride, before destruction. And you can be full of pride right up to the day that you breathe your last breath here on earth. And you, 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 if you're a believer, you go to sleep. Believers never die. 
They just go to sleep. You don't feel pain. You don't feel anything. You just close your eyes. Your heart stops. And the next thing, quickly, you're in the presence of the Lord. If you're a believer, if you're a non-believer, you will feel pain. You will feel anxiety. You will feel the depths of darkness. You will feel the burning flames of hell. You will feel the torment of worms eating at your body. The Bible tells us all this. I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up to try and persuade you. I'm telling you what the Bible says so that you can make quality choices in Jesus. Jesus. But in the same Mighty way they is. tell you you must get your facts and your information together, then make a quality decision. You need to, with spirit, regard your spirituality and your eternal life, you need to get all the facts together and make a good quality decision in Jesus' name. Before it's too late. Before it's too late. I can remember clearly, and this is just one of many incidents, coming around the bend in a police car and coming on the scene of an accident on a small bridge that went over a river and the guy had come flying off his motorbike and his head had landed in the parapet, the, the, the wall that, of the bridge that goes over and the pavement. And he was lying there and his girlfriend was screaming and his friends on the other motorbikes, they were there helping as well and they were struggling, they were trying to take his helmet off and I ran out of the police car and I said, leave his helmet on, don't take it off. And they all moved back as I went there. And I held this man, I wasn't a believer in those days, but I held this man in my arms as he breathed his last breath. And the last thing he cried out to was, Jesus, save me. Probably lived all his life without a relationship with Jesus, got to the last breath and cried out to Jesus. The good news is, the Bible says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The question is, are you saved this morning? Faith is a gift from God. If you're saved this morning, have you received that gift? The Bible says you should have. Because the Bible says that salvation comes by grace. Through faith. And grace is God's part. God pouring out this gift of faith and this gift of salvation. I spoke just now about the spiritual gifts and about the administration gifts. Uh, and, uh, or the ministry gifts and, uh, and, and there's these other gifts as well that God gives us salvation is a gift the Bible speaks of the gift of salvation God pours out the gift of salvation and we receive it because we don't deserve it so God's grace giving it to us when we don't deserve it it's like a child when the child is naughty and you say I am not going to give you a birthday gift because you're so naughty but birthday comes around and you get your gift. You didn't deserve it, but because your mother and father loved you when you were a child, they loved you and they gave you that gift. Even when you didn't deserve it, it's the same with God. And when they give you that gift, you received it. You received it willingly. You received that box wrapped up nicely. I meant to do that today because that's what we saw this other preacher do. And you receive that gift, that box. And you receive it willingly and happily because you believe there's something in that box. You've got faith. And it's the same with God's salvation. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe that you are now saved when you invite Jesus into your life by faith. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Because faith is also a gift. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 quickly. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, and it says there, For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. The people that reject this message, the people that think that they can do it themselves, that they can sort their problems out their way, I don't need God. This is who they're talking to. To think of themselves more highly than they ought to think, but to think soberly. They should be thinking soberly, clearly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So God is dealt like the card dealer deals out the cards on the poker table 
and all the rest of it. I used to play poker before I was born again in the lunch breaks. And the dealer deals out the cards, and you receive those cards, and you receive those cards. Now you've got to act like you've got the winning hand to fool the others. But let me tell you something. Many Christians, they receive this gift of salvation. They sat down, they receive the box, all wrapped nicely with a ribbon and all the rest of it. And they act nonchalant, as if the box is empty. As if they couldn't. You know, if I give you a box and you open it, I said, here's a gift, you open it. Oh, you'd be disappointed if it was empty and all the rest of it. But if I give you a small little box with maybe a diamond ring in it or a diamond pendant or nice earrings or whatever, she's winking at me, or whatever it is. Gee, what excitement. Oh, look what they've given me for my birthday. And I'm so happy. And that's how we should be about faith. That's the motivation for us to live by faith. In Jesus' name. Faith is a gift and is given for a purpose yes. to be used wisely yes. and to be used correctly. You, There's a good book by Frederick C. Price who's gone to be with the Lord and it's called Faith, Foolishness and Presumption. I've got the book at home. Very good book. God doesn't call us to live by presumption, where we presume everything. God doesn't expect us to live by foolishness, where we write our checks for 100,000 rand, when we only even got 10 rand in the bank. God expects us to live by faith, where we're trusting Him and His Word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So that when we are claiming our healing, by His stripes I've been healed. When we're claiming our provision, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Amen. We can do it with confidence. Thank you, Lord. Not according to what we see, but according to what we believe. And we will see that right now. You see, because faith sees that which is invisible. Faith sees that which is invisible. I get come in here to church, I've been doing it for years. But I still believe it will come to pass. And I see these seats full. And I look at the people. Yes. Sometimes when Trent is with me on a Saturday, setting up a sound, he goes around with the microphone, meeting everybody <laughs> and saying their name. And it might seem foolishness to people, but these are acts of faith. Because faith sees that which is invisible. When you're sick, you've got to see yourself healed and healthy. When you're... When you're struggling financially, you've got to see yourself prospering. You've got to get into the Word and find out, what do I have to do that I can prosper? One thing is to have faith. And everything else that you do must be based on that faith. Faith is seeing the impossible, the invisible. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and see what the Word says about seeing the invisible. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. You can't do anything about the outward man perishing. You're in a, you're in a fallen world. You're in a body that's full of corruption is going to go back to the dust it's going to decay and uh, and, so, and you can't stop that decay it's the way God has made it but your inward man, your spirit and your soul, they should be if you're living by faith they should be being renewed day by day, therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, that's your life, it's just for a moment, mm -hmm. is working for us a far more exceeding and external weight of glory. Let me tell you something. The Bible tells us, that's actually not the scripture I wanted to read to you, but the Bible does tell us anyway, that we do not look at the things that do exist because they are temporary. But we look at the things that we cannot see 
Because they are eternal. Amen. You cannot see eternity, but it exists. It you cannot see the air that you breathe, but you better hope it exists. That's right. you, need to, you need it. You need to breathe it. Nobody ever questions about whether oxygen exists. It's there. And yet because we can't see God in the manifestations of God sometimes, because we don't live by faith, then we choose not to live by faith because I can't see it. If I can see it, I'll believe it. That's what Thomas said to, said to the other disciples. If I can see him, I'll believe it. And then Jesus came and appeared to him. And then Jesus said to him, Thomas, only believe. Don't be doubting, but only believe. And then he showed him the marks in his, in his wrists or in his hands and, the, and in the, his side as well. And he said to him, now you can see it, now you can believe. But have faith and believe. That's what Jesus was saying. In Hebrews chapter 11, we're back there again because Hebrews is known as the faith chapter in the Bible. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, it gives a, if you like, it gives a biblical definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the evidence of things not seen. That's what I'm telling you. Faith sees those things that are not seen. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. If God said it, then we must believe it. And we must accept it. See, God doesn't give us here on earth bad things. He only gives us good things. God, amen. Oh, everything God gives is good and is beneficial to us. So we don't have to fear the fact that we can't see it, we just have to believe that it is there. And it's there for us. You see, I told you earlier on that faith, it, without faith it's impossible to please God. I told you that earlier on. Why? Because God is a faith God. God created everything by faith. He said, let there be light, and there was light. God, God calls those things that do not exist, just as though they do exist. Amen. God called everything into being. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, it goes even further than that, and it's a bit stronger than that, and it says there, in Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat from faith, for whatever is not from faith is sin. If you're not living by faith and you're living according and trusting the bank manager or you're trusting the medication the doctor gives, gives you, and I'm not saying they're bad things, but when I go to the doctor and I get a prescription, I thank the Lord that God's going to use it. I'm not ashamed when my faith is low and I have to see the doctor or go to the dentist or to, to do other things. I'm not ashamed of that in Jesus' name. But if I believe in those things and put my faith in those things instead of my faith in God, then I'm in sin. Because here it says clearly, anything that is not of faith is sin. And we've got to repent. We've got to repent. Jesus died for our sin. That's why we need Jesus. Because we're always in sin. Don't tell me we're not always in sin. Don't, there's not one day goes by when you don't think yeah. bad about another person. There's not a day goes by when some men look at another woman with lust in their hearts. Jesus said you committed adultery. There's not a day goes by when you don't tell a lie or a fib. And that's why you need Jesus. Because those things are sinful. That's right. And that's why you need Jesus. Amen. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. It's funny when you've got lights so you take them for granted. Yeah. <laughs> In Mark chapter 11, and verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. In the original scriptures it says, Have the God kind of faith. What does it say in the NIV? Uh, Jesus yeah. All right, have faith in God. But the original scriptures actually say, 
say, and I think the Old King James Version says, have the God kind of faith. And then what is the God kind of faith? The, I've just told you, the God kind of faith is calling those things that be not as though they exist. I've been having a battle, I've had a bit of a thorn in my flesh, uh, where I get a pain in a certain area of my body, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and I spoke to other people, and some say you've got arthritis, some say you've got gout, and I, and I thought, I'm not going to put a label on those things. And I laid hands on myself and I prayed and I declared healing over myself. And I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen. But what happens is, every so often the pain comes back, especially at night. And it's excruciating. And I can't sleep. And I don't sit there thinking, oh, no, wah, 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 wah. I speak to that pain. And I say, hey, I'm healed in Jesus' name. You have no place here. Get out in the name of Jesus. I do not feel any pain in my body in Jesus' name. And it leaves. Why? I'm calling those things because the pain is there, but I'm calling those things that be not as though they do exist. I'm talking about painlessness. I'm talking about healing. In Romans chapter 4 verse 17 it says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who, who he believed, that's God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they do. God calls those things that do not exist as though they do. And Jesus was doing it the whole time he walked on this earth. When they wanted to feed the 4,000 and the 5,000. And Jesus said, and they said, Lord, we don't even have money to go and buy these things. And the Lord said, what have you got? Well, this kid here, he's got a few couple of loaves and a few fishes. And Jesus said, feed it to them. And those loaves and those fishes fed the 5,000 and another time the 4,000 and the Bible says each time there were crumbs left over and Jesus, and Jesus what he was doing he was calling those things that be not as though they are when he went to the tomb where his friend laid Lazarus because Lazarus' his sister had sent for him and he got there and they said leave him alone by now he's stinking he's been dead for three or four days and Jesus said pull back the stone from the tomb and they pulled it back and he said Lazarus come out and Lazarus came out he was doing exactly as his father had taught him calling those things that be not just as though they are and the Bible says just as Jesus is so are we in this world that's a potential that's in us when we live by faith in Jesus name I was amazed one day, I was a kid, and uh, I was out with a, a school friend of mine, I forget where we were going, and we were going through this park, and the clouds were coming over, and it was starting to rain, it was going to mess up with our plans. And this guy, I can't remember his real name, we used to call him JC, and I never could understand why we called him JC, but I, I realised today he was blaspheming. And uh, we were walking along and the clouds were coming and the rain started and there was lightning and all the rest of it. And I said to him, we better, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go home, look at the weather. And he said, no, it's going to stop. I said, what do you mean it's going to stop? And he pointed and he said, peace, be still. So he must have had some sort of teaching and the storm went away. <laughs> and I was absolutely amazed. We can call those things that be not as though they are. I've been ranting at you now for the last 20 minutes about faith. And I really hope you're getting the message and it changes your life. And you start to live, live, live by faith. Amen. The God kind of faith. Now there's three ingredients to faith. And we're going to quickly look at these. And if I don't have time to finish, I'll carry on next week. But there's three ingredients to faith. And they are faith, uh, sorry, they are love, hope, and patience. And we need to go to, to get the scriptural references, we need to go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6, where it says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. It doesn't, avail, it doesn't mean anything. And God, under the old law, God commanded them, each male, 
to be circumcised of his foreskin when he's a baby. It was in the law. But now we're under this dispensation of grace where we have seen and the Israelites saw it was impossible to keep the law. And it was done like that to make them realize their need for a Messiah, for a Savior. And we're blessed today because the Savior has come. He's going to pay the price for us. And we can thank God for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so circum the Bible says that under grace, it's circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. Circumcision of the heart that matters. Your heart has to be circumcised from the wicked world and its wicked ways. And it has to be circumcised unto Jesus. He says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you open the door, I will come in and remain with you. Abide in you, the Bible says. And it goes on to say here in Galatians 5, 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Faith always operates on the fuel of love. Remember what I said to you, three ingredients of faith? Love, hope and patience. Faith only operates through love. Love for the Father. Love for the one whom you're directing your faith at. Love for Jesus because of the price he's paid for you. Love for the Holy Spirit because he fills you with all power and authority in Jesus' name. Then hope. Hope. We read just now in the, the, in the chapter of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And what did we read there in verse 1? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And it says there, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is also hoping, well, uh, operating on hope. It's operating through love, but it's operating on hope. Hope is a confident expectancy. So when you have faith, you trust in God, full of expectancy. Full of expectancy. Good, I can read now. Full of expectancy. Hope is a confident expectancy. Faith, with faith you will always have a confident expectancy. Then lastly, there was patience. Patience is waiting on God with that hope, that confident expectancy, and full of a heart, full of love. Patience is waiting on God with a confident expectancy. And sometimes we don't have the patience. Lord, I want it, I need it, and I need it yesterday. Yeah. Not today, I need it yesterday, Lord. Yes. Lord, where are you? I thought you answered prayer. I thought you were a God answering prayer, a prayer answering God. Why don't you answer me? I need it now, Lord. Meanwhile, God is upstairs. Oh, uh, they call him the man upstairs. God is up in heaven. His Holy Spirit is with us here. And God knows exactly the perfect time to answer our prayer. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 says, or oh, verse 11, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope, that's confident expectancy, until the end, that you do not become sluggish, half-hearted, asleep, a Christian that's just a Christian on Sunday. A Christian that only communicates with God in church on a Sunday. And then it's only half-hearted. A Christian that doesn't even go to church but you wait for the video to come out. That you do not become sluggish and imitate, and instead you imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Through faith and patience, inherit the promise. You inherit the promise. So there's your biblical uh, 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 proof of these three ingredients of faith. Love, hope and patience. Now let me tell you this. If any one of these ingredients are missing, then there is no faith. You can talk it. You can say you believe. 
You can say you have faith, but unless you are operating on the fuel of love, unless you are uh, full of a confident expectancy about what you're believing for, and unless you are patient, there's no faith. There's no faith. There has to be faith. There must be, uh, 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 there must be love, hope, and patience in Jesus' mighty name. And then with faith, you need to, really this is a message, maybe I must carry it on next week, because this is another message which I need to, I've just got weeds choke your faith, but I know I've got a full message on that. So just remember, weeds choke your faith. Next week we're going to look at that, the weeds, how they can choke your faith, how they can destroy your faith. It's like weeds in a garden that can destroy a plant, a beautiful plant. And then lastly, which we'll look at next week or the week after, our words and our thoughts are vehicles of the spiritual manifestation of your faith in Jesus' name. So I hope, I'm just going to quickly recap. I want you to understand, you've got to first have faith in God. The Bible tells us that faith believes that He exists. You first have to have faith in God. Faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Spirit, faith in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and faith in His Word. You either have faith in God or in this world. You're either submitted to God or to the world. Submission to the wicked ways of the world is enmity an enemy of God. I've told you that without faith it's impossible to please God. I'm going through this again because you've got to get into your heart. And devil, you will not drop the viewers or the people here today, the listeners, you will not drop them of the seed. The seed is sowed into their heart. It will take root and produce fruit in their lives. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The word preached didn't profit them, doesn't profit any believer unless it's mixed with faith. It has to be mixed with faith. And faith is a gift and is given on purpose to be used wisely and correctly. And then we went on to say that faith sees the invisible and anything that is not of faith is sin and that the God kind of faith is that he calls those things that be not as though they do exist. Amen. And then lastly we saw the three ingredients of faith. They are hope, I love hope and patience and if any one of those ingredients are missing then the pudding is going to taste terrible. The pudding is going to taste terrible in Jesus' name. Jesus went to the cross. And for those who believe, when he went to the cross, it wasn't in vain. You've heard, especially in the traditional church, where they pray and they say, for Christ's sake. And what they mean there is that the work of the cross is not taken for granted and made useless in your life. You see, God gives you a choice. And it's not going to be a question when you come before God of God, I tried my best. God, I tried this and God, I did that. And God's going to say, I didn't know you. You were so distracted by other things. Don't get distracted. Stay focused. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of the world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace in Jesus' name. And he went to the cross. He took such a beating on the way to the cross and even on the cross he was spat on. He had things, stones thrown at him. And the Bible tells us by the stripes that fell on his back we are healed. His body was beaten so that we could be healed. Why? Because he carried our sicknesses, our diseases, all the nasties he carried on his body as they beat him. And so when we take communion and we eat of this bread, as Jesus said, do it in remembrance of me. And we do it in remembrance of the fact that he paid the price and by his stripes, we are healed in Jesus' name. 
Let's eat together. <clears throat> and then he shed his blood for our salvation. He told the, the, the one thief who, who called out to him, he said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. And that, that thief believed him because that thief saw the beating he took. That thief heard what he said when he was on the cross. When he cried out to the Father, he said, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. That thief knew that this must be the Messiah. And Jesus shed his blood so that you can spend eternity with him in heaven. But it's up to you. It's your choice. All I can tell you to do is don't play being a Christian. Be a Christian. Get into the Word. Study the Word. Sit under preaching. Learn. and Feed your spirit so your spirit becomes stronger than your flesh. Because the day will come so quickly. So, so quickly when you go to be with the Lord or separated from the Lord. But the choice is yours. And you face the consequences of your choices. So let's drink together as we thank the Lord for this blood and for our salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll just go and pray. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, Jesus. we just thank you. It's good measure, pressed down, shaken Amen. together, running over, shall men fall back into our bosom. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We are tithers and givers, Father God, and we expect a hundredfold return. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we just in thank Jesus you that the, the finance is blessed. In Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bring every precious person and we think about Billy, Father God. Yes, we think we about Jenny. Yes, Lord. Name. Father God, for those that are ill, Father, for Alvain and his name. wife, Father God. For Jill, Father God. Father, for Ben, Father God. We pray for these people, Lord, that we promise to pray for, Father. Even if we don't mention their name, Father, we ask you, Lord, that your hand of healing is upon every single one. We curse death in the name of Jesus. We remove it. It will not attach itself to those that we pray for in any way, form, or shape in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you that you are our provider, Father God, that you are our peace, Father God. Uh, Father, we, our uh, confidence is in you, Father God. We just thank you, Lord, that you will uh, restore every precious person, Amen. Father. You'll answer Jesus. their prayers, Father. You'll wipe away their tears, Father God that you will bring in those things that they've been expecting, Father. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. For those that are expecting homes and cars and, and, and properties, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that they can expect, Father, that you will provide for them, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And Satan, I destroy and cancel out every assignment of the enemy against us and our families and our children and grandchildren and those that are listening to us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It will have no hold over us in any way, form or shape in Jesus' name. But the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he has no sorrow to it, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are our healer. That you are the restorer of our faith, Father God. Amen. For those that have been believing, that had faith, Father God, that you're not going to disappoint them in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So uh, call us. Our number's on the slide at the end of the video. Please call us. And uh, and until the next time, God bless God you. God bless the Lord. Bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Give you peace. And answer all your prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.